Howdy once again, it's Tubal Kane, and the subject of this video again is drill presses. I've overdone the subject a bit, I know, but I think this will be the last one. But this is my favorite little uh, drill press, my Walker Turner. And this isn't really the subject of this video. The video is going to be all about raising the tables, but let me talk about the speeds for a minute. I've written them down here many years ago. So the top speed is 4,000 and the lowest is 600. Well, never in my entire life, and I'm 75, have I needed to drill anything at 4,000 RPM. So it's crazy. And then even the 600 isn't low enough, so talk more about that in just a minute. If there is anyone that hasn't suffered from this problem, I believe you're lying. But even on a small drill press like this, to raise and lower the table is a, a bit cumbersome because upon unlocking it, it might fall on you. And secondly, if you try to lift it from the front, I don't know if my hand's in here, but I'm exerting pressure and it only causes a bind. So in order to raise it, you need to really almost get behind the drill press, raise it from this point, and then lock it. Now they make a raising mechanism, probably not for these little ones, but most of the bigger drill presses have a raising mechanism, and I noticed that Grizzly, even many of them that are smaller presses, have a raising mechanism, which is a rack and pinion with a crank. Now this is a Delta catalog from 1957, and I had this exact model at school, the, the 20 inch. It's a wonderful drill press, but these production tables are incredibly heavy, so the machines come equipped with a uh, raising mechanism. The problem is in the school shop, no matter what you say, and I know people take this, I'm criticizing students, but I'm just telling you the way it was. What they would do is grab the crank and just start cranking even without unclamping the, uh, the table lock. So this would cause the rack to buckle and ultimately break or something in this little mechanism here broke. So I had to get around that and I used a counterweight system and that's what I'm going to show you in a minute here and I, I repaired that many times at the school and we had an unlimited uh, repair budget that was one of the beautiful things but you got sick of repairing it and so I used the counterweight method and that, again we're getting to it. Well I got the Delta catalog out I want to show a few other things and in one of my recent videos I showed you how to remove the chuck that has the collar and the thread in it and uh, somebody mentioned that I, I failed to mention and I guess I did all of the di different adapters that are available to be screwed on to that threaded spindle for instance here's an adapter that would turn it to a, a number two Morse taper, a number three Morse taper and then there were, there were various other attachments made by this company and others that would allow you to change, essentially change the spindle without buying an entirely new spindle. So it really is a good system. But I never in my life have seen these in the flesh. And in fact, I would love to have a number two and a number three just like that. When I talked about and lamented how much I disliked the, the uh, high speeds of the drill press when really we need low speeds, I ran into this as I was preparing for this video, and yes, I do prepare for them, believe it or not. So anyway, in this old Delta catalog, I see that they had a slow speed attachment. I'm sure it was costly, but it cut the speed by approximately 50%. However, the disadvantage would be the great length of this. So when you add the chuck to it, you really increase the, the length of the spindle by, I don't know how much, but it looks like it's probably 10 inches. Never seen one of those in the flesh. Would love to have one. Didn't know about them until 15 minutes ago. In a recent video, I made this handle here with three knobs. I thought it was a great video, I thought it was a great idea, but I took a brutal punishment uh, in the comments with, with this, and I don't know why. I, I still think it's pretty neat. Why didn't you make that out of steel? Why'd you make it out of aluminum? Why'd you do this? Why'd you do that? And then many people made no comment other than to say, how come you didn't cover that up? That looks like heck. Looks like, one guy said, you did a hack job. So, to please the masses, I made a, <laughs> a cap. I know I'm ranting, but I got to vent sometime, you know, for crying out loud. And I, I can't answer 
all of the comments. There are too many of them, and I never answer the mean ones, and there's no shortage of them. I hope that satisfies a few. Now, what is this video really about? I removed the belt guard, and whenever I work up here, I always unplug, and you should do the same. However, on this drill press, I call these production tables. They're quite heavy. It tilts. This is really a coolant trough, but this is really incredibly heavy to move up and down. And, and a bigger drill press is much worse. You would never handle it, but when you loosen that, you know, it wants to fall. It's, it's just heavy and hard to control, and even harder to raise, and impossible to raise, again, from the, from the front end here, because you, you tend to cock it and cause a bind. So, I'm, I made, I already made it, a counterweight system. I didn't invent the idea. I got it from the junior high teachers, and it, it's probably a, a concept that's been around for a hundred years. But the counterweight will be in the column, but in a junior high, sometimes you got 75, 75 year old, no, I'm 75, 75 pound boys, and they, they can't lift something like that. And so, these junior high teachers, made a counterweight system, and uh, I visited a lot of shops. You do that when you're a teacher, and uh, see, see what other teachers are doing. So I had done that on the drill presses at school, and now I am doing it on this one. The whole idea is to have a chain or a cable or something extending from the back of the, where I got my finger here, up, around, and then a pulley, and the weight down here in the column. So I'm going to go over to the bench and tell you how I did it, not so much show you how I did it. There's the video with the improved feed handle. That's number 400. 25,000 views. So I got a question to pose. This video here, 36A, and I'm talking here November 1st, 2017, this went semi-viral. By semi-viral, that's over 300,000 <laughs> views and I'm wondering why because I do not typically get that many so if anybody knows check that video out and, and uh, put it in the comments. First you need a weight, a counterweight and at the high school I believe I used a piece of hot roll steel that would fit into the column and I was just lucky enough to have one but necessarily on that big drill press the it was quite long, perhaps, uh, I don't know, I don't remember for sure, but maybe it was 18 inches long to get that weight. Well, I had plenty of lead on the premises, so I had to turn down some pieces that I had that looked like this, and there's two pieces here. Can you see it? Two separate pieces. I had to turn them down so they would fit, and uh, because they were like this, and this does not fit, and I had thought about adding that weight, and I may still do that. But there's a hole all the way through, 5 sixteenths, threaded rod all the way through, and then a coupling nut here along with a lifting eye, and wrapped around it sash chain. So that's how I went about making the weight. So you'll have to come up with, I think probably a lot of people will do this or have already done it. Put it in the comments if you've already done this or own a drill press that is thusly equipped. Well, now we got to reduce, reverse the direction of travel, and we need a pulley. Before I go any farther, let me back up on the weights. Before I found this in my stash, what I was going to do, this is exhaust pipe, and you can buy these couplings and all of that, but it's really hard to find one that fits inside of another. I think we've all suffered from that, but what I was going to do was put a bottom on this and pour it with uh, full of lead, because I got hundreds of pounds of lead and that would be that would be great probably easier than what I did here but it's cold weather here and I don't want to get out in the, in the cold and I don't do that in the basement but anyway turning this lead if you do that make sure you wash your hands uh, you know especially you smokers you know that might have lead on your hands and uh, oh that's right the cigarettes are 10 times more deadly than the lead rim shot I remember that the way this was done years ago, we simply went to the hardware store and we bought what was called a greenhouse pulley. 
Well, this isn't a greenhouse pulley, and that's about the closest I could come to a pulley that I might be able to use, and that was $6. Well, when I asked the clerk for a greenhouse pulley, he was so shocked that he called security. He wanted to throw me out of the store. They never heard of such a thing. Did you ever hear of a greenhouse pulley? Anyway, I'm going to take this back. I still got the receipt and get my money back because I came up with my own device here. Now, this is a piece of tubing, and I had luck here that this almost fits, or it does fit into the column, but just barely. This tubing came from the Anthony Company that used to make dump trucks uh, bodies. May perhaps some of you heard of Anthony truck bodies that was here in town. They made a lot of cylinders, so I had a lot of this when they went out of business in different diameters, different ODs, IDs, and wall thickness. But I took a piece of that, and that fits fairly well within my column. Let's pretend this is the column. Pretty good fit. Now, why these two, two stupid screws, cap screws? Those are simply to give it a little bit better fit so it won't wobble around. Because I didn't have a perfect fit. Also, the inside diameter of that column is going to vary from press to press. And some of it may be welded tubing where you have a seam and, and other obstructions in there. So that worked quite well. Then, you know, I don't work from a drawing. I, I say that like I'm bragging, but I shouldn't. That's really a, a downfall. Because if you have a drawing, then you don't have to make two of everything. Okay? Anyway, that's a half inch thick aluminum. And... See how that uh, is screwed on there. I made the pulley, and it's just made out of Delrin. Didn't take very long at all to make. Matter of fact, that's about 12 to 14 minutes. And I made this groove. You can make it any way you want. So it would fit this sash chain. I had tons of sash chain for some reason. I was going to use cable. Where's my cable? I had a several rolls of this. This is from garage doors, but it's 330 seconds, and when I went to the hardware store, the smallest that they had with cable clamps was this eighth inch. So I scrapped that, and I went with the with the chain. By the way, if you don't know what sash chain, some people probably don't know what sash weights are. Well, sash chain held the sash weights. We live in a vinyl world. I've had too much coffee. So continuing here, you can see that these ears here, that's why I had to make it over. I didn't have big enough ears. That'll keep it from falling in. And again, the screws give it a good fit. And this axle rod is simply a clevis type of pin. You could use a nut and bolt. It couldn't matter less. So, that's what I've made up to this point. Let's step over to the press for a minute. Now, if you look on the back of the table here where it clamps to the column, you can see that I have screwed an eye hook in there, and this is a lifting eye. You could use one of the cheaper ones from the hardware store. I just happen to like the looks of a lifting eye, and that's going to go through and some screws put in there to make that little noose. I think it would also work to do this. And maybe I should have done that because I'm sure there's going to be people that are mad that I drilled a 5 16 hole into my drill press. But that might hold it also. And this is a view from the top. Here's the column and the inside of it. You can see it's tubular. So the chain is already down in there along with the counterweight. And this piece with the chain pulled up through it Now notice there wasn't a whole lot of space in here on either side and I can't have it touching the uh, speed control mechanism here so we don't want it to twist but by the same token uh, these ears on the aluminum here prevent it from twisting very much 
and then the chain coming up over the pulley and it's going to be dr dropped down here between the motor and the frame and we do not want it to rub against the electrical wire which is right here so let me see if I can feed it down in there like that and across the pulley now what I'll do is raise the table into pretty much the top position and then fasten the end of the chain around that eye bolt. So here's what's happening. Here's another sign of a quality machine where you have this cast iron stop here beneath the head and then one also down here to keep the table from going down too far. Now what I've done here finally and I'm just about done is to wrap the chain through the eye and put a couple bolts in there to fasten it. I got one more bolt to go probably no need but remember I'm a man that wears suspenders and a belt. And the job is about done. Okay, let's give it a test run. How's that? And there we go, the job is done, and I think I'm finished with this drill press, and it's ready for a lot of use. Maybe it will become my number one drill press over the Walker Turner, which I have always favored, especially when I still had my craftsman down here. So, let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment. Thanks for watching, and this is Tubal Cane saying, I'll see you in my next video.